Uh, welcome back, everyone, for uh, another session. Um, let's. Uh, I think we let's let's get into it. Um, so we ended last session with you guys. Um, deciding to um, forego uh, a rest and chase after Molly through the night. Um, so you guys are like in the middle of this road where you found blue. Uh, the sun's setting. Uh, Molly has a pretty decent uh, head start on you guys. Um, and it looks like she's kind of just following the road for the most part. Or at least that's what you can tell from uh, where you guys are. Um, but yeah, you guys um, are looking for Molly. What do you guys want to do? How's Blue doing? Blue is healthy. Uh, Blue is happy to, um, you know, be re reunited with Betty. Uh, definitely sniffing uh, Betty's hands, licking them, uh, wagging her tail. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. We have the trail, you said? The trail led up to blue, so uh, I think you need to look for another trail. She had been following the road up until the point that you, you caught up to uh, blue. Can I shapeshift a little bit? Ooh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, like, a little bit <laughs> just like your hand oh that would be cool but i don't think i can actually do that <laughs> <laughs> okay uh roll plus wisdom cool i got a 12. oh what uh okay <laughs> tight you um and you're using your, your shape shape shift ability correct yes yeah uh, and you get to take three hold, I believe, right? Mm hmm Okay. What are you shape-shifting into? A blood hawk. Whoa. Okay. That's cool. Um, okay, tight. Um, can you describe what it looks like when you turn into a blood hawk? Yeah. So, Danny's just chilling. And I think we've all probably stopped for a little bit of a break after like the emotional trauma you put us through last session. Um, and we've kind of lost her trail. So Danny is going to turn into the first thing that they can think of that's good for, for hunting from the blasted wastelands, which would be a blood hawk. Also a giant vulture might work, but I think that works better if Molly's already dead. So. <laughs> Very true. Um, okay, cool. Um, so, Danny uh, morphs into uh, this. What does a Bloodhawk look like? Does, are there any special features of, blood, of a Bloodhawk? No, they look like a regular hawk. Um, they're just the ones you think of that are like easily trainable, like for hunters. So probably like red feathers with a white front if I remember correctly, in a black beak. They're very intimidating looking for birds, and they always look kind of angry, which I think is cool. And they're not that big. They're like maybe the length of your forearm. Okay. I mean, that's still a pretty big bird, but uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. I mean, it's no giant vulture, but it's fine. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Giant vultures are my favorite. They're so huge and terrifying, and I can't wait to turn into one. Do you, oh, do you like the ones that are like bald, or like yeah. okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like those crusty boys. Yeah, Ugh, those ones are so gross, though. <laughs> do you know sometimes when they're flying, they'll pee on themselves to cool themselves down? I did not know that. Ugh, that's gross. That's awful. How do they pee <laughs> I did hmm? know. Oh. Go for it. How do they pick up themselves if they're flying? Wouldn't it just go straight down? They like, no, they that's a like, good question. They like flip upside down. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. That is wild. Yeah, just like pee Very straight efficient. up and like let themselves fall down for like a second. Yeah, they, they fall Ooh. down to, ca to catch the pee. <laughs> yeah. Well, my grandpa loves bird watching, so he'll some he would sometimes just walk up to me and drop a hot bird fact on me and walk away. So that's one of those. 
Oh, or... okay. If Norm said it, you know it's one hundred percent valid. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's excellent. Um, what would you like to do now that you are a Bloodhawk? Um, okay, so I want to, I want to soar up very high and then use my Bloodhawk senses to hunt Molly. I don't know what senses Bloodhawks use. I probably should uh, know this. Hawks rely, or most birds rely on their sight. They have, like, yeah. ec okay. excellent Pretty eyesight. Pretty much all birds are sight. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah, so can I s see if I spot anything? Yeah, go ahead and roll discern realities, but do that with advantage. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You might want to hold that. Hold what? It, it is in the middle of the night, and it, it the blood... It, I, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I think it is dusk. It hasn't... Night hasn't... Oh, I thought it was night-night. No. Uh, it's it's dusk. It's the sun is setting. Um, so I... The eyesight won't be helpful for long, but I think mm -hmm. uh, doing it right now will still be effective. Oh, for sure. Oh, honestly, never mind. Uh, Bloodhawks are acclimated to night vision anyways. Ha -ha. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. I was just looking that up. Also, yeah, no, I that's have, what I was doing. Do I have the same, like, advantages of Bloodhawks in D&D? Or is this just regular creature ability? Oh, I did not know a Bloodhawk was a D&D creature. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. The reference I used came from GURPS. <laughs> it was I, the first thing I saw that, like, had something. <laughs> I picked all my creatures out of like a D and D animal list based on like different territories. So uh, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely incorporate uh, those abilities uh, into your um, into into whatever animal that you transform into. It might have okay. We, we might make it a different like mechanical thing, but we can have some of the the same abilities. So go ahead and roll that Discern Realities with advantage, please. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, hell yeah. Uh, so do you have the move list, uh, up? Um. Yes. Because basically you get to ask, um, three of the questions listed. Oh, heck yeah. Okay. What should I be on the lookout for? What here is useful or valuable to me? And what is about to happen? Cool. Ooh. Those are very good questions. Those are excellent. Um, could you... Could you just give them to me one at a time, please? Mm -hmm. What should I be on the lookout for? Uh, let's see. What should you be on the lookout for? You are looking for Molly and her trail, so you should be on the lookout um, for basically any tracks. Um, you guys, uh, there hasn't been much activity on this mountain in a while, so pretty much any tracks you find, it's a pretty good um, indicator that it was. It's probably Molly, uh, so it's uh, should be very easy to follow her trail once you you know. Uh, get back down uh, on the ground level. Um, okay. Yeah. And then, what was the second question? And what here is useful or valuable to me? Oh, what here is useful or valuable to you? I mean, I think at this point, um, you have already spotted the trail that she's been taking. And I think that you've seen that she's gone off the road at this point and that she's using uh, a game trail uh, to go through the forest to try and, you know, uh, maybe not so much cover her tracks, but um, in the event that, you know, she's being followed, make it harder for any anyone to follow her. Oh, okay. So you've picked up a, a, a where she's going. And, and what path she's taken. Okay. 
And then the last one is what is about to happen? Uh, what's about to happen is it's about to become nightfall. And um, I think what happens is in the distance, you see um, smoke, a, a, a little a little smoke as if there's a small campfire uh, being lit in the distance. Um, and I think Ooh. you can assume that Molly has or has set up camp a little bit. Heck yeah, okay. So I want to fly back down and then use my second hold to drop this form, I think. Okay. Because it would probably be easier to, or maybe I can just communicate this without dropping my form by doing like bird movements like I did before. So I would like to grab Betty's hand in my little beak and pull her to where Molly went off the path and started following this game trail that I spotted. Okay. I actually, I have an ability for tracking. Um, can I go ahead and roll that? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, hunt and track. Cool. And then, let me see. Yeah, I'm allowed to, I'm going to have Blue help me. Perfect. Because it gives me the bonus. Uh, yep. He's going to smell. He's going to, once we get on the trail, I'm going to have him use the nose. Oh, shoot. Uh, could, could I clarify something real quick? Yeah. Is is Blue a, a boy or a girl? I think I referenced Blue as a lady earlier. I, I, yeah. I'm not sure. Blue is my beautiful my beautiful baby boy. Oh, he's a baby boy. <laughs> okay. My bad. I, I apologize. How dare you misgender the dog? Well, I felt... I like... thought Blue was a girl, too. Well, it's it's just... Like uh, I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. <laughs> Word. Yeah, so I got... I got a seven on the dice. Um, so with Blue's modifier and my modifier, that makes it ten. Ooh, full success. So, yeah. On a seven plus, you follow the creature's trail until there is a significant change in its direction or mode of travel. So on a, and then on a 10 plus, you also choose one. I mean, so one of these, one of these I feel like is like supposed to be uh, if trail ends and the other one is supposed to be like if you find the creature I'm not really sure if I have to like choose beforehand or not because it seems they seem pretty like exclusive, mutually exclusive. Because one yeah. is gain a useful bit of information about your quarry, which I don't know how I would do unless I found it. And the other one is determine what caused the trail to end, which if I found the creature, I don't know why the trail would end. So, I mean, okay, with so with the way I don't know with the way I'm imagining it, like, I mean, for the for the at least for the second option. Like, that means that you found where the trail ended, right? Meaning mm -hmm. uh, something something changed that, uh, you know, disrupted however it was that you were tracking uh, your query. And then, I mean, for the first one, that, that one just seems like... I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I guess my main question is, do I, do I have you answer... <laughs> the scene where I follow the trail first and then decide? Or do I take, do I pick one uh, before I know where the trail ends, even if the answer to determine where why the trail ended might just be, well, because you found them. <laughs> right, right. They're right there. That's why it ended. <clears throat> yeah, that is, a, that is, a, those are weird options. Because yeah, I see, yeah. No, I see what the issue is. It's like, why would I ever pick the second option if I, <laughs> if there's a chance that it's just going to be like, the trail ended because you found them, because, you idiot. Yeah, but the trail, I mean, the trail could have ended because they, they flew off on a giant bird. Yeah. 
in which case it would make sense. Like if the trail ended, it would make sense to pick that one. But like, it just seems like a weird design quirk to have like an option that like sometimes will be very useful and the other half of the time will be like, well, it's you, it's like a useless thing to add on to an at 10 or to a, to a 10. To a, to a 10. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to give anything away, but, um, I'm, I'm going to pick the first one, okay. which is gaining a little bit of information about the quarry, but I just wanted to know for like, if I roll this in the future, what your ruling is on that rule. Cause I feel like it's a confusingly written rule. For sure. I feel like, I feel like the second option is definitely riskier because you could end up, you know, the end of the trail could just be where the creature is. Um, yeah. And I feel like if that was the case, um, I would probably give you some sort of like boon for like you know, finding the end of their trail. Um, but, um, but yeah. But in this case, you're gonna go with the first option, right? Yeah. Okay. So, f could you first describe to me what you and Blue are doing to follow this trail and lead your party through the forest, as yeah. the, as the sun is setting and it's becoming, uh, it's dark now. Uh, as you guys get into the forest, the light is basically gone. Yeah, so I think I hold out like um, did I did I lose my spear? I think I lost my spear when I was fighting uh, when I was fighting that giant spider. So I think I'm just gonna like hold out my sword uh, with like the scabbard on, and then Danny is just gonna like a light on the end of my scabbard. Uh, Wait, and shouldn't we not have a light if we're attempting to sneak up on her? No, a light. Like, land. Isn't a light a word for land? Am I crazy? Oh, I, yeah. actu I actually don't know. I if... think you're right. I th yeah, yeah, a light. Just... Not a light, but a verb. Is Danny's gonna mm -hmm. land on the scabbard. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Put, okay. put their feet in the direction and then i'm gonna follow it until i find like uh like a weird footprint in the mud and like some torn <laughs> branches where molly's clothes that like aren't fit for traveling in the wilderness like snagged on some ramp or something and then i'm gonna like pick off what this looks like to somebody who's not paying attention like some random bit of fluff but i'm like oh this is like this is like fiber that wouldn't appear in this area. This is like some kind of textile. I'm gonna mm. give it to Blue. Blue's just gonna like get their big sloppy uh, mastiff nose all in it. Um, and then just like start following the trail like a bloodhound. Um, and then I'm just like following behind them. And Blue is basically doing like the majority of the work because they have like a plus two to this. I only have like a plus one. So they're doing like the bulk of the work but I'm just sort of like keeping a track for like clues that like blue wouldn't necessarily, the stuff that would require like critical reasoning to find. And we just kind of keep doing that while I'm like guiding everybody until we come to wherever the trail ends. Okay, cool. So, but you also then, okay, I like that. Thank you for that description. Um, but then you also get a piece of useful information, right? About Molly. About Molly. Or the query, whatever I'm tracking. Molly is aware that she is being followed by you guys. Um, you can tell by the way that she's... She's not even trying to hide her trail at all. And the way that she's rushing past... Um, you know, the way that she is moving through, um, the forest, it's at, it's at a pretty high speed. She, she is not like, she's not walking and ambling through the forest as if she's on a stroll. She is like going through the forest. I think what happens is you also find out, you know, this also because, um, you find some, uh, magical residue um, 
on the trail that you're following. And I'm going to, um, yeah, you just find some magical residue um, as if she was trying to, as if she, she was trying to slow you guys down, but didn't have the time to do so. Um, Ooh. yeah. So she is trying, you find evidence that she's, tr she was trying to slow you down, but was too rushed to accomplish, uh, those goals. Cool. So what is, what, so what does magical residue look like? Mm. Is that like ectoplasm in the Ghostbusters? Uh, in this case, kind of, yeah. It, it's, it's definitely like a sparkly, uh, a sparkly, like, uh, sticky substance, essentially, yeah. So it is kind of like Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster ectoplasm. Um, okay. yeah. Is it green? No, it's not green. Um, should it be green, though? Maybe it is. Like, I'm gonna, like, stick my finger into what can only be described as, like, Nickelodeon gack, but, like, but, like, ran through one of those space filters that was, like, really popular on the internet in, like, the mid-2010s. You know the ones. The ones that they put on leggings everywhere. I and know the ones. I'm, I'm gonna get my finger in it, and I'm gonna, like, lick, pull it up, and it's gonna, like, drip, and I'm gonna tell everybody, like, right here, everybody. I reckon she knows we're on her trail, which I might mark up to just having Blue spotted her. Because if she saw Blue sneak up on her there, she might have come to the conclusion that Blue was just scouting ahead and took off. She's moving at a real quick pace. But looks like she was in the middle of casting something and she just got too rushed to do it. And then I'm just going to, like, wipe the residue, like, on my jeans, on my fantasy jeans. <laughs> and I'm be like... I'm gonna be like, anyway, uh, I, I I feel tempted to to keep going, so we don't give her any time to slow us down. Yeah, we should definitely keep going. Excellent. Um, and I think as Betty finishes that explanation, and you guys walk uh for a few minutes longer, a few moments longer, uh, you end up um in a, a small clearing on top of a hill and there is a fire uh, a little campfire that has recently been put out um, it's still smoldering a little bit it's still warm to the touch um, there are there's still not that you're touching it but there's still heat emanating from it you look over on top of this hill and you see a village out in the distance and <laughs> You can hear, for even from this distance, terrified screams coming from the village. I mean, is that the direction Molly went? Uh, yes. I think, uh, I think Betty is able to, you know, still has, has the trail and is able to see that that is in the direction that, that, uh, that Molly went. All right, off we go then, I guess. Yeah, I like, I like reach out my hand that had the like, uh, magical gack on it, and I like hold it out for blue. It's like goes back on the trail. Excellent. Um, so you guys rush over, uh, to the village. As you guys approach, uh, the screaming has only intensified. Um, and now that you are within, uh, eyesight of, not that you're not, yeah, within, now that you're close enough to see within the village, um, you see that some of the buildings have, uh, caught a flame and there are people, uh, running every which direction, uh, throughout the village. Um, and you see that there are... Uh, some shambling figures uh, chasing after those who are screaming and running away. 
Um, uh, I don't give a fuck. I just want to find Molly. Perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> could I use one of my holds to like swoop over the shambling figures just to scout it out real quick and then swoop back? Yeah. I don't even think... Um, <clears throat> I don't think even need to think you need to roll uh, for this one since it's such a, a quick scan. Um, okay. What you see is a village uh, overrun uh, by zombies. Uh, they are uh, attacking the villagers. There seems there's a there's a bunch of them, uh, and um, the villagers are screaming. They're very upset. Uh, they're being attacked. They're being, um, you know, eaten. Some some of the villagers are being eaten. Uh, in the center of the village, though, you see uh, Molly uh, in front of the church, uh, kind of looking down the main road um, that kind of cuts through the village. Uh, it looks like she's kind of waiting for you guys. You saw. You see Molly. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I swoop back. And I would like to use my last hold to turn back into my little mouse person. Perfect. And did you do the zombie things just for Halloween? Uh, it was, you know, a happy coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> pretty great. <laughs> um, so I'm going to turn back and I will relay that information to the team. I'm going to be like, yeah. The village is overrun with zombies. Uh, reminds me of my last family reunion. <laughs> Molly is here. She's running away from the horde as well. Yeah. Oh, can I see Molly? Uh, it is hard to see through all the kind of pandemonium that is going on within the village. But uh, yeah, I think you guys can make out a figure in the center of this village. Uh, that you can assume is Molly, as she is the only one not running in terror. Um, so these family figures, are they like undead-ish? They or... are definitely undead zombies. Fantastic. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> conjure my burning brand. Okay. That's an... a 10. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Um... Yeah, so um, I'm just going to whip that out and just start swinging in front of me in, like, a really wide arc. Okay. So that we can, so, to clear a path so we can start moving forward. For sure. Cool. Uh, let's see. Because it, I don't know. I don't know if you're doing a hack and slash or if you're doing something else. Let me just look at Um, I feel like when I've done something like this before, you had me roll, like, a parlay. Yeah. Because of, like I'm trying to convince people to move out of the way. You're trying to convince undead zombies from moving out of the way, and I don't know if that's possible. Okay, Since, so like a hack I, and slash might be the only way to go here. Hack and slash might be the way it goes down. Okay. Um, what were you saying, Ellie? Um, I, I was going to ask if I can help because I have my I have a mood 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 move uh turn on dead which if when i brandish my holy symbol and call my deity for protection um no one dead may come within reach so i wonder if like i do this sort of in like conjunction with harvey using his, his uh, um his... um using using his move um hmm. i think we can kind of like work together to get to clear a path for the uh, for the zombies Oh, yeah, so, like, they can't come within a certain bubble, and then I can mm -hmm. use my flail to kind of, like, hit the ones that get too close to the bubble. Right. Okay. While they're, oh. while they're doing that, mm. um, I, I do want to try something um, against Molly if she hasn't... Has she noticed us yet? Uh, she, she, she has noticed now that... Um... Harvey is whipping a flaming weapon. Okay. Can right. we... I, I want to resolve theirs first, but can we say that I was doing what I was going to work on simultaneously to their roles, like, after their resolve? Yes. Uh, okay. So, let's see. Okay. I think I will make this a parlay. 
do you have to roll anything for your move, uh, Folly? Uh, uh, yes, I do. I roll uh, I roll plus whiz. Um, should I roll that before or after Harvey? Uh, let's see. This is... <laughs> oh, go ahead, Harvey. Parley is a charisma, right? It is charisma. Can it be hack and slash? Because, like, the way we've kind of moved it towards is that I'm hitting the ones that get too close to the bubble. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm I, physically making space. Yes, I like that a lot. So, um, so I think we'll just do we'll just do Harvey's move and then uh, Folly's move because I think that'll just I think that'll just it's a good combination of things that happen. So, okay, so it won't be an aid. I don't think it's going to be an aid. I think it's just going to be two separate moves. I think you're. I think. I think what it's going to look like is. I think the the zombies finally notice you guys, and they are kind of charging, uh, for you. Or there's a couple of them coming for you guys, and um, I think you're going to react first, Harvey, and whip out your your burning brand, and start like fending them off. And then I think at the same time, uh, or just like a split second after you. Uh, mm-hmm. Folly is gonna start uh, casting their their magic. Okay, I got a ten. Okay, uh, sick. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. And so I rolled a ten on my burning brand. <clears throat> so we're going with yeah, cool. Oh, 11 damage. Solid. Huh. Okay. Could I spread that between multiple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could definitely do that. So I, I think yeah, there's... Because the way I was... Oh, yeah, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, the way I was kind of thinking I was doing it is like, I'm not attacking anybody individually. I'm just kind of... Like the idea of suppressive fire, but, you know, a melee weapon. Just... Right. It's 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 definitely yeah you're you're kind of push trying to push him back yeah yeah um okay so I think that there are um there are like three zombies coming for you guys um and we'll just roll that damage out um amongst those three I'll just do um four four and three yeah on them Sounds yeah good. cool um. And those zombies that you hit, uh, definitely kind of like take a step back. They like take the hit, right? Um, and it causes them to physically step back, uh, not from pain, but more just like as if they're being pushed. Um, and then, uh, Folly, go ahead and roll your move. Okay, um, that is an eight. So, so, um. Eight on on a seven plus, as long as you continue to pray and brandish your holy symbol, no one dead may come may come within reach of you. Okay, awesome. Uh, and you're kind of in the middle mm-hmm. of, you know, of everyone, right? I imagine. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think. I think. What's your holy symbol? Well, um, oh, that's a good question. My holy symbol was this like little carved wooden wheel I had. It's a symbol of like my kind of like my family's god. But I got this mushroom from this different death god called Ash. I think I'm saying the same prayers as before, but I instead of holding this little like wooden wheel, I have my hand in my pocket that has this mushroom in it, and it's so it's like looks looks awkward as hell. But I'm, <laughs> I'm like I'm, <laughs> but I'm I'm trying things out. Uh, very cool. <laughs> Well, it, uh, it worked very well. Um, the zombies that uh, Harvey, uh, you know, caused to stumble backwards uh, now um, tried to move forward again. But every time they try to take a step closer to you, um, they... They take a step back and, and recoil as as if they were in actual pain. Um, and so the three undead that were trying to attack you are no longer able to do so. Um, um I wanna I wanna turn around to Polly real quick. Can you just just stop for a second? I wanna pull out a spider queen thing 
one of the spider queen things and like walk up to one of the undead who's like right at the barrier mm-hmm. and just kind of like toy with him let let him like try to get at me because i'm like right the fuck there okay um and then just put it through its eye <laughs> okay uh let's see because i know Cause remember last time i was kind of outside of this yeah yeah i just wanted to i know betty wanted to do something too at the same time oh, right i forgot about that sorry betty you go ahead first oh yeah no word um I was gonna, the reason I was, I wanted to do it simultaneously is because the called shot move that I was using, I realized last time it's supposed to be when they're defenseless or surprised. So I wanted to do it while she was still still surprised that we were there, finally. Um, Ooh, okay. But basically, I wanted to eat one of the mushrooms from last time. Uh Uh-huh. That gives a... that gives like a I get like a plus one to my decks. Yes. Or yeah? Yep. Okay. So <laughs> I'm gonna eat that as we're rushing in, and then I'm gonna do a called shot. You said I can't really see her. How what's what's the range on your on your bow? Or your crossbow? Um, I don't know. I had it modeled after um, I think they're called like an arquebus, which is like a bigger, like kind of heavier crossbow. Oh, like an arlabest? Ar- Ar- yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the range on that is. Let um, me... Arquebus. Oh, no, that's a gun. No, I think it's oh. a, it, I think it's an arlabest. Arlabest? I thought it was arbalest. 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 Yeah, ar- it's an arbalest. Yeah. That, that's just how it is on the, the tome micro class. Yeah, yeah. I had it modeled after that, so I was going to try... I don't know what the range is on that. Uh, I feel... Uh, 110 yards. Oh, so shit. 330 feet. <clears throat> um, I that's don't three, know the that's, conversion. That's three and a, that's three and a third uh, yeah. football field. Here, I'm doing the math real quick. Yeah, 330 feet. Uh, let's see, near... Okay, so I think that's a far range. So I think that your arbalist is like a near to far range. Okay. Because uh, far, uh, for Dungeon World, far is like uh, attacking something within shouting distance. Uh, yeah. And I, I think that, that counts. So I can make the shot? I think you can make the shot. Um, can I... How much of, I, of her can I see? Is she just sort of like a shadowy figure? Uh, smoke? Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely... Yeah, it, it's definitely not easy to, to you know, see her at, the, at this distance. Um, uh, it's like, I don't know. She, she's not so much... I mean, I mean yeah, it, it, she's definitely shadowy. And a little bit blurry because of, of the distance, right? Um, and you're trying Mainly to... Mainly I wanted to know if she was holding up like a big arcane focus or something. Oh, no, she is not. Okay, then I'm going to shoot I'm gonna shoot at her legs. Ooh, okay. Ooh, rough. Yeah, we don't want to kill her. Immediately. So, I got a 12. So, on a 12, I roll my damage... And oh, damn. she now hobbled and <laughs> slow and slow moving because I have shot her in the femur. How much and damage was that? Uh, I haven't rolled. Oh, yet, s- sorry. The the the, the, the my uh, my bolts um, until I run out of this ammo are still poisoned with the <gasps> spider venom that. Oh, yes. God, damage. that's so good. We love it. Um, and I do seven damage to her. Hot. Seven damage. She, she, her like attack is weakened, and she is now slow moving. Oh, that was fucking sick, Jacob. Okay, yeah, that was incredible. Uh, you hear, uh, you hear a scream, 
a few seconds after the bolt uh, flies from your, your from your arbalist, uh, and you see the figure uh, drop to the ground, uh, and you hear them scream in anger, and you hear just barely above all the other screaming, you hear the faint words of, uh, "I hate you, you half wits," and um, you see. Um, you start to see a glowing coming, appearing before, uh, Molly's figure. Oh, she said she hates us? She hates yeah, you guys. uncalled for. Um. And she called you half I, um, unless, really unless, uncalled unless, for. Unless oh you want to make a move, I have a thing I want to do. No, I want you to do the thing that you're going to do. I would like to break. I hope it hurts her feelings. I would like to break <laughs> from the group. I'm gonna drop my burning brand. Okay. And I would like to break from the group and sprint forward. Like I'm gonna put my shield on my back and go. Okay. That's uh, some anime stuff, right that is, there. That is some anime stuff. Uh, go ahead and roll defy danger. Uh, what's the... Is that dexterity? I think that's gonna be dexterity in this case, because you s mentioned that you're kind of, like, trying to go with speed. Devin? Fourteen. Solid. Jesus. Okay. Uh, uh, so that was, uh, two sixes plus two, so, uh... That's incredible. Um, uh, so... <laughs> What it, what this looks like is Harvey, uh, on like so there's like a, there's like a village right. You guys are basically in, on the outskirts of the village. Molly's in the center of the village, right? Harvey, literally sprinting through this village. The zombies are trying to get at him, but Harvey is doing some like football maneuvers where he's just like spinning out of the way at the last moment, totally not even touched by these zombies. <laughs> it's 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 literally incredible to see. Harvey makes it to the the center of the village where Molly is, but in front of Molly has appeared um, another figure. Uh, this figure is another undead uh, human creature, um, but. They don't look nearly as decayed as the rest of the, uh, as rest of the zombies that are attacking the villagers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this, this zombie, or not this zombie, this, this, uh, undead has, um, is standing in front of Molly and is dressed in tattered, rotting, uh, uh, clothing that looks as if, um, they would have befitted uh, a person of noble stature uh, if they were still alive. And um, he has this this figure, gray, bloodless, pallid skin. Uh, he's got a mustache. He would look regal uh, if he wasn't undead and wearing these tattered clothes. Uh, and he is just smiling uh, at you, Harvey, with his... Uh, Oh, hold on. With his... With his rapier drawn and a stiletto in the other hand. Um, I'm gonna smile back at him. What good are you if I kill your conjurer? Go ahead and try. I don't think you'll have much of a chance. Mm. I guarantee I'm faster than you. Uh, he, 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 um... He smiles again, uh, with a with a small with a small chuckle. I think you're mistaken. I would and like that's why you're dead, Harvey. friend. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say, Polly? I would like to cast blast on Harvey. Oh, solid. Um, is there is there a range on bless? I, I just uh. It doesn't it 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 doesn't say that there's a specific range. It doesn't say I have to be like touching them or anything. Okay, perfect. It says a combatant of their choice. That is, uh, that is a nine. Ooh, solid. So it's successful, and he takes plus one ongoing. He takes plus one ongoing, but it's partial. Uh, mm -hmm. 
in order for you to do that, you have to stop brandishing your holy symbol and thus okay. ending the the turn undead spell. That's that's fair. Yeah, I think I, I'm I'm so distracted by Harvey's on you know you know really cool like dash to <laughs> <laughs> quarterback dash through all these zombies and I I just uh, was stopped praying anyway. Perfect. I love it. Uh, so Harvey, you're feeling quite invigorated. Uh, you can tell. Have you have you been blessed by Folly before? No. No, this is your first time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you question the feeling uh, that no, you get? No, I feel like it probably feels similar to eating one of the mushrooms. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You and just... I'm just like I'm fucking wired. I'm ready to go. I think it's just like. The, the combat, the, the battle sense setting in, and I'm just like, let's let's do this. Let's do this. I love it. Um, okay. Uh, as you are squaring off with this undead uh, swordsman, uh, Danny, uh, what are you up to? Your comrades have, you know, Harvey has dashed away from you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and all your other comrades have, have have been working to fend off these zombies, um, but you see the zombies have felt that the magic that was turning them away has faded, and they are coming yeah. towards you again. Uh, what do you do? Okay, I would like to suggest that the three remaining teammates form a wedge formation Ooh. so that we can drive through these zombies, and. Remind me, do zombies have any particular feelings about light? Uh, just like blinding light? Just regular light. <sighs> like, are they like vampires where they like are opposed to it? Yeah, well, I mean, vampires are only opposed to UV light specifically, right? Because it's the ray of the sun. I don't know if like a street light would necessarily upset them. Um, so I think then I probably can't use my shillelagh to, like, chase them off with the light, but I can use it to, like, whack them, right? Yes. I don't, yeah, I don't think a normal light would, would fend them away in any meaningful manner, uh, but whacking them would definitely fend them off in a meaningful manner. Okay, yeah, I want to whack them. Okay, excellent. Uh, so go ahead and roll a hack and slash. Okay. Um... This one you can choose if you're doing it dexterously or with strength, right? Or no, I think it depends on the weapon or your class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in general, you can pretty much only hack and slash if you have like the precise or finesse. I think it's finesse. Yeah. Tag with dexterity. Or is it precise? I think. Oh, okay. I'll just roll <clears throat> strength then. Yes. Perfect. Which is zero. Oof. That's a three. Oof. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. So I think Danny is the first person in your party uh, to get overtaken uh, by a zombie. It, um, I think you, let's see. I think what happens, I think, I think what happens is your hit lands and it rips off a jaw doesn't slow them down at all and it <laughs> kind of shambles on top of you and is grappling you um and yeah. i think it's like it's like trying to bite you uh but it doesn't have a jaw anymore so not to be gross <laughs> but but it's, but it's just licking you <laughs> he's just, like, just like, oh, yeah yeah, oh, <laughs> it's... yeah no, okay because here's the thing when danny is not like turning into a creature or a rock like they're pretty they're pretty low-key so i think what happens is they try to fight immediately fail this zombie starts licking me <laughs> and i'm gonna like look back at my teammates plaintively and be like i had a dream it would end this way <laughs> <laughs> Basically, no, no, give Danny, up. It's not over yet. Um, okay, I think we're gonna. Uh, I think we're gonna turn to Betty. Uh, so Betty, 
uh, you watched Harvey dash off uh, after you launched a bolt into Molly. Um, Folly has been casting uh, some magic that you may or may not be knowing what's going on there. And Danny tried to um, fend off a zombie, but was, you know, immediately overtaken and is now being uh, ferociously licked. Uh, by said zombie. <laughs> Ferociously licked. Ferocious. Uh, what do you What do you want to do? I'm gonna. So uh, once I fired off that shot and saw Harvey taking off, I stowed my arbalist on my back. Cool. And I'm gonna reach for my close quarters weapons, and I'm gonna give like a whistle, uh, for Blue to like join me in like side by side, like fighting. And I'm going to try to get this zombie off of Danny and also try to like take up the center of the the wedge that we're trying to form to like get up the hill to meet with Harvey. Okay, cool. Um, since, since there are three of you, is it basically a pointed triangle or like an inverted triangle? An upside down triangle is that the wedge that you're trying to make i'm pretty are you try- are you- wide i have like some reach um so i was gonna try to be in the front okay you're trying to be the point yeah i'm trying to be the, pu- the point like an arrow okay excellent um, uh so go ahead though and roll hack and slash since it sounds like uh you're you know you're working to try and get the zombie off of danny before it it okay. does something you know Slightly worse than licking her or licking them. I lost my precise weapon in the fight with the Spider Queen. Right. So I'm rolling with strength, but I get to add Blue's ferocity. That is a 13. Oh, solid. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Um, I just want to remind you that at any time you roll a 10 plus, uh, you can choose to take uh, an additional 1d6 damage, but you then expose yourself to the enemy's attack. How many of these zombies are there? There's directly in front? There, there's, there's a lot, um, but uh, directly in front of you are, are um, the one attacking Danny and two others that are kind of uh, shambling towards you to try and, and get close enough to get you guys. I'm not trying to get turned, so... <laughs> I'm just going to take my damage. Okay, perfect. Total, that's going to be nine damage. Okay, excellent. Could you please describe how you uh, remove the zombie from Danny at the same time as you kill them? So, uh, Blue is, like, fighting directly under me. Like, if you've ever seen those, like, videos or, like, pictures of, like, when the two, like heads of the pack like fight each other like one will like protect the neck so i'm going up high and blue's going down low and like blue's gonna bite this thing's leg and then i'm just gonna like put my spear through where the like hole in the jaw was where the bottom jaw fell off and then like i'm cutting off a piece of meat and my spear is the fork i'm gonna like cut its head Uh and then um I'm gonna like step into the front and then I'm just gonna take my spear and go like that and like fling the skull at one of the zombies. <laughs> and then make a sound like a coconut hitting another coconut. I love it. A very <laughs> clock, a clocking sound. Uh, yeah. I love it. Uh, cool. So you managed to destroy one of these zombies, uh, uh, throwing its head into another zombie. The the other zombie, you know, has its head knocked and is now like walking with its its head off to the side. And Danny is now free from, uh, you know, the the pervert zombie. Um, the situation. The situation, and um, cool. There are still plenty of zombies uh, around you. Uh, There is screaming from the other villagers in the village. Um, 
some you can still see some zombies are you know munching on some fallen villagers and in the distance um harvey you are facing off uh against a very almost regal looking undead fellow and mm -hmm. molly is uh crawling away to the end of the other other end of the village uh and i think we're going to take our break here and okay. pick up we'll pick up with harvey um <clears throat> when we get back <laughs> 